everyone, and welcome back to Reflect Forward. I'm your host, Carrie Siggins, and I am so glad you are here today. Today, my guest is Chelly Phillips. She is a sweet tea sipping sassy Southerner with a passion for helping leaders develop their own brands to stand out, not just for any reason, but for the right reason. She's a coach, a corporate trainer, and a motivational speaker. She's written a couple books. Her first one is called When in Doubt, Delete It. The second one is Get Noticed and Get Hired. And then the third one, which just came out recently, is called The Culture Secrets. She is awesome. She's going to teach us all about personal brands today and why you as a human being, you as a leader, should intentionally build your personal brand. Let's face it, we all have a personal brand, whether we're doing anything with it or not, because our personal brands are how people experience us, quite frankly. And that's what we talk about today. So hang tight and I will be right back with Chelly. Welcome back, everybody. I am so excited to have Chelly Phillips with me today. Chelly, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to a great conversation. This is so exciting. So you have a new book that's out, The Culture Secrets, and I know that you coach and train and do all kinds of fun stuff. So can you tell us a little bit about your journey and how you got to where you are today? Yeah, absolutely. So it was it's really kind of interesting how it got started in the career development path and how personal branding played a role in that. But for about 14 years, I worked with sororities on college campuses in Alabama. And so I had this group of leaders, generally speaking, every semester come through. And after spending four years with them, and you know, the leaders of the organization are usually the ones that have it most put together. They're the ones that you expect great things out of and everything. And they would graduate. And if they didn't get a job in their field right to begin with, and they took what I called get by jobs. What we were finding is that they would get offers that were five to $8,000 less than their counterparts who were getting them right out of school. So it was almost like because I had work experience, my education was getting discredited somehow. And so what I really did is started a program with them where we were working on how to brand yourself personally for career development. How do you get that position and how can you use your work experience to show that that's an add-on benefit, not just because I have the degree, but hey, I've actually shown up. I'm dependable. I've dealt with people. I've managed office situations, all the soft skills that we're looking for in today's workplace. Then that transitioned into, I had a corporate shift in my life when we had a new CEO come in and basically felt like my skills were no longer valued or wanted at that organization, lost a seat at the table. And then it was up to me to decide at that point in time, do I want to stay there? Do I want to go? And after you had 20 years someplace, that's a big decision yeah. to make. You know, there's that whole fear aspect of, oh, you know, what's going to happen? What's out there? And then just realized I needed to take a big dose of my own advice and, and put my own personal brand together and get it straightened out. And so once I did that, that led to the coaching, changing career, the new books, and then being able to really build my own business around that. And then, of course, throughout the pandemic, so many other people were interested in, is this what I want to spend the rest of my life doing? The three books actually kind of follow my life path. The first one, When in Doubt Deleted, is about personal success, what it takes to succeed. The Get Noticed, Get Hired is for the more young professional. How do I show up? How do I get noticed for the right reasons? And Culture Secret is more the corporate business side of it, is how do we create the environment where people feel that they're wanted, where they belong, and that they know that they're valued in that workplace. I love it. I love it. I love it. That's fantastic. And I'm so big on personal branding and everybody has a brand, whether you cultivate it or not, whether you understand it or not. And obviously how you work within your brand and how you interact with other people's personal brand is going to help you be more successful or less successful in the workplace. So I'm really excited to dive into this conversation. Maybe you could tell us why you think having a curated, or maybe that's not the right word, but be intentional about your personal brand. Why is that so important for people and leaders in particular? Yeah. So, you know, the first thing is, like you said, you're going to have one, whether you're intentional about it or not. And for a leader, to me, you're wanting to show up and lead, I like to think is not necessarily a title. It's a verb. Yeah. And so how you lead people and how people decide that you're somebody that they want to follow, that you're going to have a program or a path that's going to put them in the right place is all about what they see in you. 
and you create that system of trust because of what you're putting out there, how you show up at the office, how you deliver on emails, how you go through evaluations, all of these things add into your personal brand. A lot of people think it's just their social media, like their LinkedIn profile. But your personal brand is so much more than that. It's your interactions in the break room, in the halls, and it's how do you really get to know your people so that they trust you and that they will follow your direction and turn to you for advice on how to do things correctly. Or if they're having issues, they feel comfortable enough, they can come to you before they escalate into major problems. So for that leader inside any organization, whether it's an entrepreneur, whether it's somebody in the corporate setting or even in a nonprofit setting, you're wanting to set that stage so that people have that trust factor in you. So how you show up matches what you're putting out there. And it gives people a chance to really be like, yeah, this is how they are at work. This is what I see that they're posting and what they're talking about and how they're sharing out information. Especially if you have a team that you lead, it's so important that you include them in your brand. Make sure that you're giving them credit where credit is due. Show them that you realize the impact they're having on your success as well. I love that. I always tell my employees or people who I'm mentoring or advising, it really matters how people experience you. And what do you want that experience to be like when they walk away from an interaction with you? Do you want, how do you want them to feel? And so many people don't think of it through that lens. And that's really what you've just said, what personal branding is. It's truly how people experience you. And the more thought you put into I want people to see me this way. I want people to experience me this way. Then the more likely you are to create that type of interaction. Would you agree? Totally. I I tell people a lot of times it's how people think about you when you're not in the room to defend yourself. It's what are they saying about you in the break room when you're not there to hear it and how to scrub it however you want it to be. And then like for the younger professional, I tell them it's a lot about setting yourself up for that next step in success because people are not going to pay you what you think you're worth. They're going to pay you what they think you're worth. So, you know, how you feel about yourself and how they feel about you, how you show up. If you're going for those interviews, the really the only thing they have to base it on is what they're reading and seeing about you and then how you show up for that interview. So you have to really be intentional and control what's out there for people to find. And it really is a piece that people overlook. I was, I did some research when I was working on the last book and it was Forbes had done a study and ask a group of professionals, do you have a personal brand? And how many of them had been intentional about it? And over half of them said they had a personal brand. But when they asked them to describe it or how they'd been intentional creating it, only about 10% of them had put any work into it. And so I think people on the, on the surface, they realize how people think of me is important, but it doesn't trickle down into, I need to make those intentional steps to make it happen. I love that. I just had an employee whose husband was laid off and she sent me his resume and said, hey, you're very well networked. Could you pass this around and see if there's anybody who might be interested in talking to my husband? And the first thing that I did, I opened his resume and I look at his email address and it's Yahoo. And so I emailed her, I texted her, I said, hey, you probably want to have him change his email address because Yahoo is, I mean, that is so long ago. And it just tells somebody that you're not very technologically maybe up to date and recruiters are going to pay attention to that. And she said, oh, you're totally right. In fact, I was talking to another friend of ours who was giving us advice and they said you should create your own website. And so then that way you can send a recruiter or a hiring manager to your site. So that way they can get more detail about who you are, much more than they can just get off of a resume. And I was like, that's brilliant. So They created a website because, of course, now it's so easy to be able to do. And she sent it over to me and it was so fantastic. It allowed him to tell his story so much better than what a piece of paper that looks like everybody else's would do, especially when they had a Yahoo email address. (laughs) It really did help him to get through his unemployment faster because he had created this personal brand through a website, which was basically taking his resume and expanding upon it and talking more about his hobbies and how he wants to make an impact and how he views leadership. So anyway, such a great example really resonates with me because we just went through this here recently. Yeah, absolutely. I was working with a client myself not too long ago and he was changing career fields and it had been several years since he had 
updated anything. You get comfortable where you're at and you're like, oh, I don't need to update the resume. Oh, I don't need to fool with this because I'm going to be here forever and it's the perfect place for me until something happens and it isn't. And one of the things with him was he had gone through something similar to me where they had a, a change in management and it just changed kind of the whole culture of the organization. And he said, I don't want to be here anymore. And he was telling me a story about when he was a child that his father had rental property and he used to go with him to help do maintenance or work on it on the weekends or probably just tag along if you want to know the truth. And but that was the family vacation fund. So he wanted to make a switch into real estate and but he didn't want to focus on like new homes or anything. He wanted to work with people who were wanting rental property because he had such a great experience when he was a child about that. And keeping in tune with what you're saying is like we redrafted his LinkedIn summary statement to include that story that he's been interested in rental property since he was a kid because back then it meant fun vacations. And now he wants to be able to help other people do the same thing with their families. And so when you can add that personal touch to anything that you're doing, when people can really feel like they get to know that authentic who you are kind of person, then you're going to connect on such a deeper level and they're going to respond to the stuff that you put out there so much more effectively. Well, that people connect in, to stories. That's who we are. Exactly. We are, you know, some of our experiences. And so when you can tell a story that people can say, oh, yeah, I can see myself in that or, yeah, that's the kind of person I want to work with because they get it or they get me. That's so important. And being able to share those stories effectively as part of your personal brand, whether that's on a website, whether that's on your LinkedIn profile or social media profiles or in your interactions with people, it's so incredibly important for building those connections and for people to remember you and to say, oh, I really like that person. And, mm -hmm. and that per person I connected with and that person understands me. I love that you brought storytelling into this because it is what your personal brand is. It's, your personal brand is telling a story, whether you have good stories to tell or not. Absolutely. Sometimes people don't really think about their past experience, the stories that come with that and how to connect them with the skills that they're trying to show. I tell everybody, if you looked at my brother and me growing up, I was all about school. Send me, let me write papers. Let me do all this kind of stuff. And of course, I've ended up an author and journalist and PR person. So I write all the time. My brother was this person that tore everything apart in the house and never put it back together again in a way that it, it worked. I said, I swear I never had a blow dryer that lasted more than six months because he was taking it apart to see what happened or he'd get a remote controlled car and it would be in pieces. And now he works on helicopters. It's funny how we develop those things throughout the years. And that really is who we are. Yeah. And when you can really put those connections out there in a way that other people can see them, it just adds to that layer of trust that people have. You're showing up how you are. You're not afraid to do that. One of the steps I talk about in my first book is being authentic to who you are. And that really is such a key, not just in personal success, but also in business success today. Because when we're leading teams and we're working with people, the more authentic that we can be, the more real it is and the more they're going to recognize that as well. And the happier you're going to be. It's so funny you gave that example because so I'm a writer as well. I was a I wrote for my high school newspaper. I was editor, copy editor in chief my senior year. I love to write, but I was also good at math and science. And I really wanted people to see me as smart. And my dad actually told me that I shouldn't go to engineering school because I wasn't smart enough and actually encouraged me to go to journalism school to, to build upon my writing talent. But all I heard was, you're not smart enough to go to engineering school. And so that's what I did. And I graduated from Colorado School of Mines, but I was completely lost because I wasn't authentic. And I was not that person who wanted to take apart things and put it back together. Like I have zero interest in design unless it's like cloth clothing because I like fashion. <laughs> Although you can't tell it by my sweatshirt today. But I just didn't have any interest in design. And it quite honestly, it led me to a pretty dark path because it didn't feel authentic. I had built this whole brand around being good at math and science, going to engineering school. And I was going to have this engineering degree, but it wasn't what I wanted. It wasn't where my talents, skills, and interests lay. It wasn't a waste of time. I wouldn't be where I am today if I wouldn't have gone to a school of mines and done the path I did. But it led to a lot of pain and suffering because I had to figure out who I was. 
And it's so much better to just be authentic and not do things for other people. You're going to make such a bigger impact when you are your authentic self and when you really understand that. You know, now full circle, I'm a CEO, but I also just wrote a book and my, the first book is coming out. It's, it's kind of funny. It's like, oh, look, you know, dad was right. <laughs> It's amazing how smart your parents are once you get a little bit older. <laughs> uh, yeah. If I would have understood that, of course, when you're 18 and you have the way of all of that to figure out, that's a lot harder. But if I just would have been more true to myself, it would have led me to a different path and I have no regrets, but it also would have probably not caused so much pain and suffering because of that inauthentic brand that I was trying to build rather than my authentic one. Yeah, I can relate to that. I was one of those kids where... When we got to high school where we could pick our electives, I was funny when you were talking about math and science. That was me too. I was really good in that area. In fact, was recruited to go to a school that was specific to tech at that point in time because of what I had done while I was in high school. And they were recruiting women actively at that time because there's so few entering those pathways. And it was just really funny. I ended up in that path because I was a band geek as well and did all that kind of stuff too. The artistic side of me is pretty strong, but I didn't want to take home ec. And so I had the choice between principles of technology or home ec at this time slot that I needed for that elective block. And so I ended up in principles of technology, much to my mother's chagrin, that do something you're going to need. I'm like, nope, I'm going down this path. And I loved it because it was so neat. And I was using the math and the science piece that I loved and everything else. But I am happy that I did actually get back on that path. And so my degree was in journalism and PR and really kept that through college and the experience and everything. But I can so see, <laughs> I can so relate to what you're saying. <laughs> oh, it's not easy. It's not easy having all that pressure of trying to figure out what you want to do and what you don't want to do. At any time in life, like you just said, you just had a client who's going through a career change. This is something that I think that people really struggle with I go down a path and whether it was the wrong path to begin with or my goals change, my desires change, we're always evolving. And then people feel so stuck. I made these choices and now what am I going to do? And I believe that you can reinvent yourself many times over, but it's hard. Like, do you have a lot of clients who are in that place of, I need to reinvent something about myself? And how do you help them get over that fear? So first is just giving yourself that grace to realize that hey, this was great for me for a while, but it's not me anymore. And to realize that we do evolve as people over the course of our life. We learn different skills. We learn things that we like or we dislike. We like different environments. Some of us work better solitary. Some of us love to have people around us. And a lot of that you don't know till you get out in the workplace to begin with and see what actually works for you. And the first thing I do when I'm working with a client like that is, okay, give yourself a little bit of grace. So what you've been in it 20 years, the world's changed, things have changed. Maybe your kids have moved out now and you can experiment with some things because you're not funding their life as much as you were initially to begin with. And you can take a few of those chances for yourselves right now. So it's a really good time to look at it and see what you want to do. And the environment plays a lot in that and really get clear about what kind of environment do I want to be in? You know, that was where the whole premise of the culture secrets came from is that people want to feel like they belong somewhere. and Finding what is congruent with you as a person, what you're good at, what you value, the skills that you really want to use on a day-to-day -day basis, and then finding the place where you feel like I'm a good fit and I'm able to do these things. That's when we have that hallelujah moment and go, yay, it all worked. This is where we're supposed to be. When I work with women, I think the statistic is that if there's a job that a woman's interested in, she feels like she has to have almost 100% of the characteristics or the qualifications to apply. And if it's a male that's applying, if they have at least 50%, they'll take a shot at the job. I think women need to be more fearless like that. Just try for it. Do you need to learn how to repackage yourself? Because a lot of the skills you've used for the jobs that you've had can translate into the one that you want. They may call it something else, but a lot of the times it's the same thing. And understanding what the role and the position is that you want and then being able to take the skills that you have and translate them into how do these work with what I want to do? How can I show that I can be a success doing this using the background that I have and bringing it together and using that experience as a success marker for whoever you're going to apply with because you bring that experience with you. Maybe it's not in that role, 
but it is in with working with teams, it's working with clients, it's working with customers, it's working within a budget. All of these things matter. And so taking a step back and feeling out how you can reframe yourself so that it more aptly fits that position is probably the first two things that I would tell someone to do. I love that. When I applied for my job 17 years ago, I was so underqualified. But I had done just that same thing. Like, I haven't actually managed people before and I haven't run a company before, but I've done a lot of these different things. And I was actually quite in a desperate place, which is what made me apply for it rather than not, even though I was like, I'm never going to get this job, but maybe it'll be my foot in the door for another position within the company. And so I went for it and it wasn't out of self-confidence. It was totally out of desperation of I have to find a job, but I totally did exactly what you just said. I repackaged, like I've done all of these things. I haven't done this exactly, but here's how I would think through it. Here's how my experience would lend itself to solve this problem. I never said I've never done that before, but this is how I would approach the problem in my life. And it was really uncomfortable. And I thought for sure I'm not getting the job, but the founder saw something in me. I met with the executive management team at the time, and I was way less intimidating than the traditional candidate who was going to come in and change everything. So they took this huge risk and hired me. I was 28 years old. But the founder said that they really appreciated two things. One, that I could tie my current experience to the questions that they were asking in a way that was authentic and believable. And they could see like, okay, she could make this leap. And even though I hadn't actually done that before. And I was honest, like I've never done that before, but I gave them my thought process and it was enough for them to say, you know what, let's give her a shot. If it doesn't work, we can always hire a more traditional candidate, but it's what got me that position. And so it goes to exactly what you just said. It was understanding that, you know, your experiences can relate. You just have to find that tie and going for it and being honest. Yeah. And it led me to where I am today, living my very best life instead of the complete mess I was at the time that I was applying for the job. But if I never would have just taken that risk and bet on myself, even though it was out of desperation, I wouldn't have created the life I have now. Yeah, fear is the number one staller, I think, for people. I tell everybody, self-confidence is something you learn. It's not necessarily a skill that you're born with. You, you can learn that. You may never love getting up in front of 200 people giving a talk. But you can be confident in the way that you present your skills and your abilities. And that's a learned trait. And it's becoming very comfortable with how we talk about them. And even with LinkedIn and your personal branding stuff, that's a good step to get comfortable talking about you. You know, a lot of those platforms, especially LinkedIn, they want it first person. They want, I experienced this. I've done these things. And people don't like to write that way. They don't like to write about themselves. It's very uncomfortable. I had the worst time I remember after winning an industry award at one point in time, my boss wanted me to write the press release about me winning the award. And it was the most uncomfortable moment at that point in time in my job I had because it was like, oh, my good Southern upbringing. My mom would be totally mortified if she knew I was bragging about myself. And so you have to get used to the fact that it's not bragging. It's just putting out information that is what it is. You have accomplished these things. Be proud in that and be willing to talk about that. You can do it in a way that's not boastful or braggardly. It can just be talking about the accomplishment itself. And that's one of the things I encourage when I'm working with leaders is get used to bragging on your team so that they feel comfortable talking about the wins themselves. Because when your team is successful, you're successful as that leader, that manager, that next step. Hopefully people are going to see that and move you up. But then you have to have somebody that's going to fill your role that's going to be able to take your position. And when you can move one of your team members who now feels comfortable in this and understands that coaching role and understanding that importance of recognition and what you're doing and, and how we bring that about as a team element, you know, it just moves everything so much faster and farther along. Yeah, I totally agree. I love that. Great advice. Okay, so let's jump a little bit more into the nuts and bolts. So now a person's like, okay, I see the value in building my personal brand more intentionally where do I get started? What advice do you have for my listeners? I tell everybody, there's an old Chinese proverb, the best time to plant a tree was 100 years ago, but today is not a bad day either. And I'm totally paraphrasing that. And that's not exactly how it goes. But the truth is the same for your personal brand. You know, it's always best if you could have started 10 years ago or 20 years ago, or whenever you became in whatever position that you were starting your career in and building it across the road. But it's okay to start today too. And that's the thing, we go back to that intimidation level. It's just about being intentional. 
make that decision that I'm going to start showing up, I'm going to start interacting, and I'm going to start being comfortable talking about what's going on in my career and my professional life. And just start making a plan to share it out. You can start simple. You can share out industry news. It doesn't even have to be specific about you, but give it a little tie. Use a little blurb about why this matters to you and the career that you're in. Thought I'd share this. It was interesting to me since I work in XYZ position and share that out. You can start where it's not so heavily focused on you if you have to have a warm up period and get used to doing this kind of thing. And then focus on your team. Share out what's going on with your team that you're working. And then you don't feel maybe it's all about me. I'm focused on the team effort. You can take baby steps and you can start growing that profile. And I tell everybody not to jump into 12 platforms at one time. You know, that that's the other thing is everybody feels like I've got to be on Twitter, I get Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, X, whatever the new ones are, TikTok, you name it. There's a new one coming out every week. And so, no, you don't have to jump on there. Pick one and get comfortable on it and just get really solid on that. And if you're a professional and you're wanting to build your brand for your career and for that professional side, I would say LinkedIn is the first one to focus on. It has such a strong tie with Google that if you don't have a personal website, more than likely, if I Googled your name, your LinkedIn profile will be the very first thing that comes up. If you have a personal website, which I think is a great thing for people to have, and they're so easy and so inexpensive to get today, go ahead and get your name as a domain and have that website. And then you're controlling that anyway. That's another piece of controlling the message about who you are and what you do. And then it'll be the first piece that shows up. But those are the first two things. If you're stuck, ask five of your friends when they think about you, what are the five skills they think about or what do you bring to the table to an organization? And if you get some consistency in that, then that's probably what you want to focus on. These are the things that I'm known for. And, you know, if you struggle to find that consistent message, then that's where you need to do a little bit of soul searching and figure out what do I want to be known for and how can I start putting that message out so that people get real clear idea of who I am. Yep. And it evolves over time. I built my first website and I did exactly what you were doing. I was sharing industry things and things going on within the company, but it wasn't like that thought leadership, even that's an overused word. But what I realized back in 2015, I was like, I want to write a book. I know I have to practice. And so I'm going to create a blog. So I went and I built my own website and I got carriesiggins.com and I started just writing to find my voice again, since I hadn't written anything but an email <laughs> since engineering <laughs> school. And that just evolved. And then people would say, oh, hey, that was a really good piece. Would you mind writing a guest article for this publication? And that started to build. And then I got more confidence in putting my own thoughts out onto LinkedIn and whatnot. And then as I really started to build my personal brand for speaking and for my book and for the impact that I wanted to make, it's evolved. Like now I've got it really, really dialed. It's always been around making an impact, but over the last five years, I've got it just pinpointed a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And I look back on the evolution and I'm really glad that I went through that. And even though it was a little bit confusing at times, and sometimes I'm like, what do I, do I want to do technology and disruption or do I want to do culture and leadership? I can do both. It's like, what really resonates and what do I feel the best about and how am I bringing joy to people's lives when I talk about these various things? And so it evolved. And so any advice when people ask me, like, how do I do what you've done? I was like, just start and put it out there and then see what happens, see what resonates, see what feels good to you. And it will evolve over time. Oh yeah, that's the thing. If you look back on when I was 21 and I was starting at the newspaper and my editorial columns, whole nine yards, I was a lifestyle editor. So I had a lot of free reign to do some more social columns and things and interest pieces on who people were. Just like your writing evolves, who you are, the skills that you develop, your voice, like you were talking about, it evolves too. Same thing with your personal brand. I'm not who I was at 21 that I'm at 52 now. And I hope that's a good thing. I have added some things that have made me a better person over the years. It's made me a better leader. It's made me show up in the world in a different way. And like you said, what mattered to me at 21 isn't necessarily what matters to me now. It's still probably an important piece of me because I wouldn't be where I was without it. But it's exactly what you said is we get very focused, the more clear that we get and the longer that we do this on what do I want people to take away from their interaction with me? And that's the really neat thing about building your brand and building the culture, especially when you're in team settings, is what do you want that interaction to be like? What do you want your brand to be like? I really tell people culture is not anything different than like your internal brand. 
for an organization. It's how your employees think about the organization as a whole. And that can come down to how do I feel about my cubicle mates or how do I feel about the people in my division or on my team? You can have multiple cultures inside an organization and it's going to depend on who that leader is and what they're cultivating. And same as you, is you can have a group of followers and people on your social platform. And when you get really clear about that, that's when you start attracting the people that think the way you think and you're able to have some great conversation that way. If you want to change your brand, right? Like I don't want to be known for what I was known for even five years ago because of that evolution. And sometimes people get stuck on, you know, the way that you used to be and that's what they always think of you. So what advice do you have for somebody who wants to go through a rebranding and says, you know, I don't want to be known for that anymore. I want to be known for what I'm truly passionate about now. I think you just, you be real. Yeah. If you have a social platform and a following, this is the time I think where you use a video and you just have a real conversation with the people that are on your platform and be like, hey, I hope you're like me. I hope you're growing and evolving and you're trying new things. And this is where I'm headed now. This is what matters to me. This is what I'm passionate about. And this is where I can think the most difference. So you're probably going to see a change in some of the things. I understand it may not be your thing anymore. That's great. If I could help you anyway, to be it. If not, then, you know, we part ways and I find someone else who this resonates with. In the workplace, though, our employees are who they are. And so it's a little harder, I think, on a personal level, because you have to go back and rebuild that trust again as that leader inside that organization, especially if it's from a bad experience that you're trying to overcome and you want people to think of you in a different way. Or even if you're stepping into a role where the person before you might not have been the strongest or the most engaged leader, and you're wanting your team to respond to you in a different way. The other thing is that you're going to have to realize is that it's going to take a little bit of time, Mm -hmm. but the consistency and the message and the way that you put it out in a way that feels authentic to people and to you is going to be what makes all the difference in you being able to make that rebrand. If you're talking about just LinkedIn on your career profile, You can make some tweaks. People are used to people swapping careers and professions. But I think it's good to give a little explanation on this is why I'm so excited about trying this new path. And this is why I think it's what I need to do. But it really does. It'll go back to that whole, I'm authentic. I'm being real with you about what's going on in the journey, whether that's in person, on platform or whatever. Yeah, such good advice. This is so much fun. All right. To wrap things up, I would like to ask you my signature question, and I'd love for you to answer in the context of this conversation around personal branding and authenticity. But the name of this podcast is Reflect Forward. What does Reflect Forward mean to you? I think it really goes back to how I got my start when I was working with the college women. And I think reflecting forward is that I hope what I've been able to share with them and how I've helped set them up on a career path and how I help others do that allows them to be able to impact others in that positive way, that they can share that message, they can keep it going, and they can keep it moving forward in a way that, you know, we realize that we're a sum of all of our mistakes from the past, but yet that doesn't define who our future is and how it's going to be. And so as we continue to move and as we continue to grow as professionals, that our brand evolves with us, not to be afraid to take those leaps and reshape them, and really show up as who we are as people in the workplace. Oh, so beautifully put. Thank you so much for that. (laughs) All right. So how can people find you? Easiest way to find me is my website, which is chellyphillips.com. And of course, I'm all over LinkedIn, and I would love to connect with you there as well. Wonderful. Well, I'll include all of that in the show notes. And Shelly, thank you so much for coming on the show today and having this conversation with me. It's something very near and dear to my heart. So I was really excited to have this conversation with you today. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Oh, and real quick, if people wanted to find your books, are they on Amazon, on your website? Amazon, website, Barnes & Noble, pretty much any of the booksellers you can find them at. Wonderful, wonderful. Great. I'll include a link there as well. All right. Thank you so much for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks again. All right. Hang tight and I'll be right back. All right, everyone, I'm back. I hope you enjoyed that podcast with Chelly. Such a fun, fun person. I love her sassy Southern style. All right, with that, I will leave you for your day. I hope you have a fantastic one. And if you like this podcast, please write a review, subscribe to it, share it with a friend. It helps with the algorithms. 
And if you want to buy my new book, please go to Amazon or Barnes and Noble, search Carrie Siggins, The Ownership Mindset, and you will find it available for pre-order. I really appreciate it. We're going for about that 5,000 pre-sale books. So every book counts and I so appreciate your support. So please consider buying a copy. All right. With that, I will leave you for your day. We'll see you next week. Thanks.